Good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to our regular scheduled council meeting for August 2nd, 2021 at 7 p.m. Welcome, citizens, council, administrators, and all those in YouTube land. <laughs> Ms. Burner, can you call the roll, please? Mayor Lowry. Here. Councilman Grimm. I'm here. Councilman Eggleston. Here. Councilwoman Nowakowski. Here. Councilman Cobb. Here. Councilman Rosewald. Here. Vice Mayor Cook. Here. Seven members present. Thank you very much. And tonight's invocation will be done by Councilman Cobb. Here at Revolver, give us the strength to do what we can for our citizens of this community. Watch out for our first responders, our paramedics, firefighters, and our deputies. Also watch out for our military personnel and also help us get through this other virus coming through. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> On um, to action on the minutes for the regular scheduled council meeting of, let's see here, uh, July 19th, 2000, our work session, I'm sorry, work session for July 19th, 2021. So moved. Uh, motion by Ms. Eggleston, second by Mr. Vice Mayor. Does council have any discussion on those minutes? Right, when you're ready. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Councilman Eggleston? Councilman Nowakowski? Yes. Councilman Cobb? Sustain was not here. Councilman Rosewald? <coughs> Abstain. Wasn't here. Vice Mayor Cook? Yes. Notice minutes are accepted 502. All right, then moving on, we'll need to uh, accept the minutes for the regular scheduled council meeting for seven, uh, I'm sorry, July 19th, 2021. So moved. Second. Motion by Mr. Vice Mayor, second by Ms. Eggleston. Any discussion? In those minutes. When you're ready. Councilman Nowakowski? Yes. Councilman Cobb? I'm staying not here. <coughs> Councilman Rodewald? I'm staying not here. Vice Mayor Cook? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Councilman Eggleston? Yes. Those minutes are accepted 5 0 2. Thank you. <coughs> One second. All right, uh, moving on. Action com uh, communications tonight. Charter Review Commission members, interviews, and appointments. So uh, we, uh, had a, we had a few uh, discussions and, and live meetings with um, three of our um, three uh, applicants. And then um, we have another one that has uh, filled out an application tonight, Ms. Matlock. Um, so, um, Council, I will. Uh, Hand it over to you guys if you guys would like to ask any questions that you haven't gotten your answers to to the members in the audience, which um, we've had a little discussion with them in some of the work sessions. So, um, does anyone have any questions? No, no, not at all. Okay. Well, I will, uh, since um, we didn't get a chance to uh, speak with Ms. Matlock. If you don't mind putting you on the spot. Oh, no. uh, just, you just kind of run down if you don't mind me. We've got your applications here in front of us. Sure. In front of you. It's kind of a brief, you know, who you are and why you were interested in joining. Oh, yeah. Um, well, I was interested because I've lived in this community since 2015. We wanted to take a more active role, especially now that my kids are a little bit older. It makes things a little easier. Hmm. All right. Sorry about that. Pretty brief. Pause. We had a little interruption. Back to you. I apologize. Oh no. Um, I also thought that charter review would align with my skill set and kind of the history of my career. Through contracting, I really like regulatory reviews. I've done some freelance work for Dave McAmey, um, a juvenile judge in Great County. Okay. Those were the reasons why I applied. Was trying to get involved more. Do you know any of our uh, current applicants? At all? Mm -hmm. Mr. Griffith. Uh, I met you today, but no. <laughs> I've probably seen everybody by face. Kathy Wright. Through. Um, okay. Very nice to meet you. All right. 
if you spend any time at the ballpark at FedEx Field or down at the Summer Hills with Casey, I'm sure I'll see you. <laughs> so. All right. Anyone else? Any, any interview? Okay. I guess none. So. All right. Well, if that is the case, then council would need to make a motion to accept their so move. Second. Second. Are you doing one for? Yes. What are we going to do about that crate piece? Well, we're going to we'll have to visit that at a later meeting. Okay. Since we don't have the legal answer on how to handle that one. Um, are you making a motion for one? All four? You can do all four. I thought I'm just, we had I'm, already interviewed, or we had accepted the applications on the others, had we not? Okay, if we not, not then I'll it make it a blank. So, yeah, make it, yeah. Yeah. so we have a motion by Mr. Vice Mayor to accept all four applications. Can she read the name for the record? Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, Don Hall, Scott Griffith, Ryan Matlock, Kathy Wright. Correct. And then <coughs> a second by Mr. Rogan. Okay. Council, any discussion on those before we move with vote? When you're ready. All right, Vice Mayor Cook. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Councilman Grimm. Yes, and thank Councilman you for Councilman Higgleston. Yes. Councilman Okowski. Yes. Councilman Robo. Yes. That motion is accepted six zero. And yes, I mean. Uh, Echo what Mr. Grimm said. Thank you, Ms. Matlock, and to the other three who were here earlier for the work session. We appreciate your uh, time to join and help the city. So, all right, moving on. And for those of you, I don't know, on that committee that was here for just that portion of the meeting, I know you guys all have busy lives. You are more than welcome to excuse yourselves from the meeting and get back to what you may have going on in your daily lives. Which better involve a chicken sandwich. <laughs> um, I do have a question. Yes. Um, are you going to contact me with what next steps are for where we go from here? Yeah, well. Oh, get off. Okay. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> you want to get out of here or you want to stick? Smart <laughs> choice. Yeah. Run fast. Bye. Thanks, guys. See ya. All right. So, um, Moving on to City Manager's Report. Mr. Bridge, good evening, good afternoon. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, uh, members of council, members of, of the public. Uh, kind of a short report. The first one of the month can get that way sometimes, but I didn't overload it um, just because we're still finishing up some things and got a lot of legislation on. So just a quick update with the Mayor's Court. Uh, so we have a few uh, ordinances left to go. So we'll do the first read on that uh, August 16th. Second read would be September 6th and effective date of September 22nd. Uh, I will have to have a short training period with our contract deputies to get them all on the speed uh, and then get the building the downtown set up ready to go. Uh, I'm anticipating early October. Bear with us on that. We're about done though. It's been a learning process, a long process. And again, hats off to council for doing this. Look at creative ways to get revenue back into our budget. But more importantly, looking out for your own citizens so they don't have to go so far to take care of some of the issues they have. So I think this is going to be a really good turning point in the city's history. Um, it's been an honor to be part of it. It's been, like I said, very long and a lot of step-oriented process, but you know, uh, it's, the end result's gonna be awesome. So uh, American Rescue Plans funds, uh, just have an update there. We do have the first up of $291,500 change in our account, so we do have that uh, in the books. We'll have to do some legislation more than likely in the future to uh, just uh, tidy up some things on the legislation end. Um, upcoming legislation for council, 2022 to 26 capital improvement plan that will be first read of August 16th. Um, we'll probably dedicate that work session on that day just for a little capital improvement plan work session. Again, as we know throughout the year, by the time we do our operating budget, some of those capital uh, purchases are going to be slashed. We're kind of not putting a lot of weight on the person like we've done in the past. There's no sense of having four hour work sessions on it because we know it's not going to be the same by the time we done with it. Right. But I do want to spend some time on it with council, so I'm looking to do that on the work session, uh, that meeting before. Is that okay with everyone we think? Yep, okay. Uh, codification numbering update, that's going to be August, September. Um, we, I have found a section in our employees generally code that years ago was uh, incorrectly codified. Uh, it's in there where it should be, but the numbers are not correct. So we're going to fix that 
And then we also have a employees generally code section update as well. Codification. Yeah, no, I'm like, I don't have, I have my lifeline. I'm not <laughs> gone. I had a, I had Pepsi out in my truck, brand new. Oh, water here. I need sugar. I need sugar. Sugar. It, it's fine. Okay. All right, so a uh, motion to approve. So we have Greg Nash, um, who submitted his parks and rec resignation. I, I do have that attached to the city manager report. And um, we also have Lynn Sexton, uh, parks and rec board application for appointment. And then also Tonamola Parks and Action Application, uh, Parks and Recreation Board removal. Uh, the part, the last Parks and Rec Board meeting, Ms. Ms. Mola did not show up. So I think they are requesting the council remove her. You guys do have that authority for non-performance. Okay. So we need basically a motion for each one of these items, the three. Yeah, I would do because they're all separate things. Right, the resignation, yeah. the application, and the removal. So I'll, need, I'll be asking council for a, to accept the resignation letter from Greg Nash. So moved. Motion by Mr. Vice Mayor, second by Ms. Peggy Higginson. Any discussion, Council? And when you're ready. Councilman Nowakowski? Yes. Councilman Roadwald? Yes. Vice Mayor Cook? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Councilman Eggleston? Yes. <clears throat> that motion is accepted 6 0. Right. We're moving on to Parks and Rec Board application. Of, uh, from uh, Ms. Lynn Sexton. We need a motion to accept that application. So moved. Second. Motion by Mr. Vice Mayor, second by Ms. Eggleston. Any discussion? And when you're ready. Councilman Okowski? Yes. Councilman Roadwald? Yes. Vice Mayor Cook? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Councilman Eggleston? Yes. That motion is accepted 6 0. And then we will need a motion to remove Ms. Tanya Mola from the Parks and Rec Board due to, I, I guess we can say, inactivity and missing excessive meetings. So move. Second. Motion by Mr. Vice Mayor, second by Ms. Engelstein. Any discussion? When you're ready. Councilman Nowakowski? Yes. Yeah. Councilman Rodold? Yes. Vice Mayor Cook? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Councilman Engelstein? Yes. That motion is also accepted 6 0. Thank you very much. Was that Thomas? Thomas, yes. Okay, awesome. I thought that is all I have for the city manager report. Be happy to entertain any questions. Thank you. Uh, just one quick question actually on the, the, um, the uh, mayor's court. And yep. I think, um, oh God, I'm just like my mind. God, I hate when that happens. Um, are we still planning on doing it downstairs in the in the main room for starters? Yeah, if that's okay with you guys. I okay. think that's a good place to start. And yeah. See what kind of growing pains we'll have. I have, and then eventually maybe look at going upstairs. Or something like and then I had I, I remember my main question now, and I don't know if you'll know the answer to this. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Once this is in play, uh, and just as an example, officer pulls someone over for speeding. We'll just use a basic something basic. Does he when he writes that ticket? Does it automatically go to us? You know, you know what I mean, or or for talking. I mean, does it always go to us, or is it something that you understand what I'm asking? Yeah, if these sites under our code, then it go to us. Okay, it always it, goes it, to our. Yeah, the, uh, we can't direct an officer in the state of Ohio how to write his charge. Okay. Because he always has two options. He can do the local option, or he can do the state code option. Okay. And when you and I know that by some of these cities have decriminalized like marijuana. Like city of Dayton counts. It's still up to that cop. If that cop is a Dayton cop, he can legally charge you under state code and give you tickets for the marijuana if you want. Mm -hmm. But he couldn't use Dayton code because it's not there. We will instruct our officers to always cite under the new Carlisle code. Okay. Once it comes to our court, our magistrate will say, no, we don't want to send it out to the county. Okay. Does that make sense? Gotcha. Yep. Thank you. All right. Counselor, any other questions for the city manager? Yes, as soon as he's done. Okay. We have one question for you from Mr. Grimm, if you are. Yeah. Okay. You said there was $91,000 in the bank that you didn't know that was deposited? No, that was American Rescue Plan funds. We, our first dump was 291000 
Okay. Yeah, that's what is in the. What, that's what I was updating. Is that we've got the first half. We have. We're getting over five hundred thousand, but they're doing it in two different dots. So we got two hundred ninety. We got the first half now. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just heard the ninety-one. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Thank you. I wish I said we just found ninety-one. <laughs> <laughs> no, unfortunately, that's a different pot of money. All right. Thank you, Mr. Bridge, for an excellent report as always. No problem. And moving on to comment, Mrs. Angleston had a comment. Throw something next time. I, I, um, I know I've asked you this before, and I can't find it, but was there some kind of a grant or something through the county for low to moderate income? Yes, yeah, that was a CHIP 2021-22 agreement that we did. Um, I checked with Dirk on that before the last council meeting, and it was going, and it had not been through the commissioners yet. So I will check to see if that, we approved it on our end, the commissioners have to approve it on theirs. Okay. Once they do that, I'm sure there's a waiting period to be effective. Uh, but yeah, that is on the agenda, and that is the CHIP um, Community Housing Improvement Program. We wanted to do research on it, so federally funded program, um, and I want to say that was, um, what ordinance number are we on, are we on now? Are we in the 20s? Yes, we're in So that 20. was probably either 12, 13, or 14, if I remember correctly, sir. But if not, just look under the ordinance titles for CHIP 2021. Because it had all that information attached to the legislation we put in there. Yep. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. You good, man? Yep. Thank you. All right. Anything else, Mr. Vice Mayor? Anything new on the shelter house? Oh. We were still waiting for that. He had just applied last week, so we're still waiting to hear back on that as well. Mm -hmm. And how's the uh, Madison Street School coming? It's about done. It's I'm thank you for that. Um, Howie, actually, let me know this morning. They are putting their last round of bricks out at some point in time today. So go get them. This will be the last round of bricks, but it is, it's coming down pretty yeah, quick. It's, and I met with the drone guy. He's got some good video. I'll send it out to council. He's got, he time lapsed it like 500 times speed. Like it, it's fast. Um, but yeah, it's about done. And they got that last wall, the front wall and the new section down today. Mm -hmm. And I don't have numbers on this and it's kind of not what we're talking about. It just made me think of it. I was talking to Scott for our new website. Our website traffic has exponentially increased with that new website than what it was before. Really? Mm -hmm. Good. Good, good, good. Yep. Anything else? Lots of changes. All right. Well, thank you, Mr. Bridge. Thank you. And moving on to comments from members of the public. Anybody has any comments, please go to the podium. All right, thank you. And committee reports none. Drop down to resolutions. Yes, ma'am. We have resolutions. on July 19th, public hearing and action tonight. A resolution amending resolution 2020-21R, the capital improvement program for the city of New Carlisle, Ohio for additional capital purchases. Council? So moved. Second. Motion by Ms. Eggleston, second by the Vice Mayor. Mr. Mayor. Sir. I would move in the seventh whereas we remove handheld metal detectors. Oh, did I miss something? Oh, no. That's for the mayor's report. Yeah. That's what council wanted, wands, to check people come in to the court. Yeah. You don't want them? We're not allowed to buy any someone's person, papers, homes, or effects unless we have evidence they've done something wrong. Um, they're going into a government building. Yeah. We can make sure they don't have what is on them. So that I get you on normal circumstances, but since they're coming into the court, that'd be like not going into Springfield court without going through the metal detector. There's no exception for courts. Well, they all have them. Okay, okay is there a second? Oh. He said one, two, three, four, five, six. He made an objection. I moved that we remove that. No second. No second. So it does not move forward. There's no. I'll talk to you later about that. That's, that's really intriguing, actually. Interesting. We'll talk later about it. Okay. Well, we have a history of 
crushing people's rights. I don't know if making sure someone doesn't have a weapon coming to a court would be your rights mm -hmm. extend to your fingertip, and that's what I think most people forget. Once you're right, once you start impacting other people, they're no longer rights; they're laws. So I think that's where it comes into play. I'm interested to see where it says courts can't have metal detectors because I've never seen a court that doesn't have metal detectors or something like that. That's just been a recent. Oh, a recent one. Doctor. Recent. Uh, sure. Fiasco. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we had the original motion by Mr. Vice Mayor and second by Ms. Eggleston. Any other discussion? Any call the vote, please. Okay, Councilman Okowski? Yes. <clears throat> Councilman Rogold? Yes. Vice Mayor Cook? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. <coughs> Councilman Grimm? No. And Councilman Eggleston? Yes. <laughs> that motion is accepted four to one. Just right. Jim Lawson, have some water. <coughs> Take this opportunity to <coughs> join you. Say five to one. Yeah. Five. Oh, duh. Five. One, yeah. two, three, four. Okay. It should five. be five to one. Okay, yes. Yeah. That motion is accepted five to one. He did. Yes. <laughs> he didn't drink out of your straw. <laughs> okay, <laughs> moving on. We have resolution 2021-14R, introduction public hearing and action tonight. A resolution declaring the necessity of improving the streets of the city of New Carlisle, Ohio by lighting them. Move to accept. Second. Crap. Who was the first and second? Grimm was the first, second was? Yes, Mr. Grimm was the motion, uh, Mr. Vice Mayor was the second. All right, an explanation of this uh, resolution. This is the first uh, uh, piece of legislation in many uh, for the city of New Carlisle to light the streets. Uh, so this is a resolution, a, res a resolution that declares the necessity of improving the streets of New Carlisle by lighting them. Council, any questions? I just had one, Mr. Bridge. I may have asked this years ago, and I just can't remember the discussion on it. But mm -hmm. why are Twin Creek streets not lit? I mean, part of the, however they did the ARPUD. Part of, I'm sorry. What? How they designed the development. Right, but I mean, is it, I mean, if if they were to ever say, I mean, how would that go about if they said, you know, we as a community out here, part of the city of Nicola street lights, how would that go about playing now? Uh, we would assess them for the infrastructure, like getting it installed, okay. and then put them on the assessment like everyone else. So they're not assessed for street lighting? No. Since they don't, okay. Nope. I just didn't know if it, they were part of it, even though they didn't have it or not. Mm -hmm. okay. It's only linear footage for people who are streets that are lit. Okay. Yep. Great. Thank you. Right. Sir. The uh, rates have not gone up? No. I haven't raised them in, I think, three years, four years. Okay. Yeah, and we may have to look at that next year. I kind of left it alone this year because we carried over a little bit of the fund balance. We're actually going to use that money for some street lights downtown. But the month we get dumped in, because we have the LED increase, but I'm kind of see what that's going to plateau out at before we, I would rather take $2,000 out of the general fund opposed to reassessing our citizens. And then once we know what that is, then put a fair assessment on it. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So right now it's around 60 or 61 cents per linear feet um and we haven't changed per year sometimes per uh, year per year yeah okay. okay thank you yeah no problem good question great thank question you, and um back to you Ms. Meyer. okay mayor lowry yes councilman grimm yes councilman eggleston yep councilman okowski yes councilman roadwell yes vice mayor cook yes that motion accepted six zero moving on to ordinance 2021-23E, Introduction, Public Hearing, and Action Tonight. An ordinance authorizing the expenditure of funds over $20,000 for the purpose of the City of New Carlisle, Ohio's annual audit of financial statements for the calendar years 2019, 2020, 2021, 2022, and 2023. Authorizing the City Manager to enter into a contract for said audits and declaring an emergency. Second. Motion by Ms. Eggleston, second by Mr. Roadwall. All right, explanation of this ordinance. This is a yearly audit that we are by law to do by the state of Ohio. 
How it works is every five years, you have a five-year cycle with the state of Ohio. That means state of Ohio employers are down here. They are doing your audit. After five years, they put that out to bid. Uh, last year was our first year of five with a private company that won it offered to bid by the state of Ohio. So basically, this private company is acting on behalf of the state of Ohio. When this was submitted to us last year, our then finance director, um, Mrs. Watson, did not supply me with the front page that you guys see. I mean, showed it up here. She did not supply me with this page that shows every year. The only thing she supplied me with was the contract that we had with the state of Ohio that had no pricing on it. So in years past, what we do is we wait to uh, the engagement letter from when they're on site, and it's usually well past when they started. To sum it up, we got all that stuff in advance. I'd rather just have a legislation piece for one legislation piece for the next four years to cover it so we don't have to come back every year. The price each year is here. We know what it's going to be. There's no sense of having this being done every year and then charging our attorney charges for review when we can get it all done at one swipe. So that's what this is in a nutshell. It is an emergency because the audit is actually, we put in an extension for it. It's now due at the end of the month. But when we were writing this legislation, it's actually due August 2nd. I would still like it to be emergency, so we don't have to wait for 15 days for it to be effective. And this we had to put off from last time because we didn't have enough people. Yes. Okay, exactly. thank you. Yep. Any other discussion? Ma'am? Vice Mayor Cook? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Councilman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Nowakowski? Yes. Councilman Rogel? Yes. That motion is accepted 6 to 0. Awesome. Well, thank you. Ordinance 2021-24. This was introduced on July 19th. Public hearing and action tonight. And ordinance employing a magistrate for the new Carlisle Mayor's Court. Second. Motion by Ms. Nowkowski. Second by Vice Mayor. And an explanation of this ordinance. This ordinance will employ a magistrate for our uh, Mayor's Court. That will be... Uh, up and running, hopefully, in October. Council, any questions, comments, discussion? Are you ready, please? Mayor Lowry? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Councilman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Nowakowski? Yes. Councilman Rodewald? Yes. Vice Mayor Cook? Yes. Motion to 760. Ordinance 2021-25, this will be by 19, public hearing and action tonight, and ordinance employing a clerk for the new Carlisle Mayor's Court. Uh, motion by Ms. Nowkowski, second by Mr. Vice Mayor. And an explanation of this ordinance, uh, just as the previous ordinance employed a magistrate for the mayor's court, this one will employ a clerk of courts for the mayor's court. Council in discussion. And when you're ready, please. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Councilman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Nowkowski? Yes. Councilman Rubel? Yes. Vice Mayor? Yes. We have Ordinance 2021-26. This is introduced on July 19th. Public hearing and action tonight. An ordinance replacing a certain section of Section 248 of the Codified Ordinances of the City of New Carlisle regarding city policy. Second. I didn't hear the first one. Is it Agleson? Thank you. I heard Mr. Redwell, yes. So. Ms. Eggleston, we have a motion, second by Mr. Redwell. And an explanation of this ordinance. Uh, this uh, uh, ordinance would replace our current credit card policy to uh, replace it with the one that's attached to this. This one is a result of House Bill 130, 132 changes and our need to uh, further strengthen our credit card policy in House 2. The auditors always like internal controls. The more internal controls we have in place, the better our audit turns out. So we have a very strict credit card policy. Council, any discussion? When you're ready, please. Vice Mayor Cook? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Councilman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Nowakowski? Yes. Councilman Rodel? Yes. That motion is accepted 6 0. All right, the next third view or read them, it looks like. We have Ordinance 2021-28, 20, 
introduction tonight, public hearing and action on August 16th. And ordinance determining to proceed with the improvement of certain public streets within the corporate limits of the city of Carlisle, Ohio by lighting them. Ordinance 2021-29, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on August 16th. And ordinance levying assessments for the improvements of certain public streets within the corporate limits of the city of New Carlisle, Ohio by lighting them. Ordinance 2021-30, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on August 16th. And ordinance certifying to the Clark County Auditor and authorizing placement on the tax duplicate certain delinquent utility accounts for collection with real estate taxes. Ordinance 2021-31, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on August 16th. An ordinance certifying to the Clark County Auditor and authorizing placement on the tax duplicate certain uncollected weed and or grass cutting fees for collection with real estate taxes. Ordinance 2021-32, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on August 16th. An ordinance certifying to the Clark County Auditor and authorizing placement on the tax duplicate certain uncollected nuisance abatement fees for collection with real estate taxes. Thank you very much. Well, moving on to other business. Uh, any other city-related discussion, Mr. Graham? Yes. Mr. Bridge. Yes. Are we not going to be able to have a community cleanup this year? No, I think we established that a few meetings ago that it's all based off not having pride workers because uh, they stopped that for this year during COVID. And Mr. Kiko, we had talked about that quite a few meetings ago. Yeah, but the, you said uh, you were going to check with the sheriff to see if that was still in place. And, I, and how he came back and he said that they are not doing anything. It's at the liberty of that. I mean, we can still pull it off, but we're going to need a lot of volunteers. I mean, a lot. Because of pride workers, they would do all the heavy lifting. They would move all the stuff from the truck to the beds. I mean, so it's a very orchestrated endeavor. We don't have enough staff to do it, so it definitely rely council really getting a lot of volunteers to come out and do that. But for us, all it is is we're really securing the dumpsters and then getting permission to use the site. So us, it takes two seconds. It's the labor and the man hour to find it. How long does that usually run? A few hours? Four. Four and what, maybe six to eight volunteer? Or? Oh, way more than that. We had probably 20, 30 pride workers at a time from down. Mm -hmm. a lot. Well, we had, didn't we have some scouting folks in there? Mm -hmm. I think we had. Uh, we had Boy Scouts one year. We had the they Boy did a lot. Oh, uh, the pride workers did a lot well, of the heavy Pride workers, workers, I think, in there besides. Mm -hmm. uh, you guys this. get the volunteers. Let, let me know when to get the dumpsters. I mean, that's what it comes what, to. What month did we normally do that? We usually did it earlier in the year, didn't it we? It was, I want to say May, June. Yeah, it was, yeah. Same like day the as second the, week uh, of June. Right mm -hmm. Well, I'll tell you what, I, I'll volunteer to help with it. Do you want to maybe visit it at the next meeting and see if we can't maybe just. I'll that? volunteer. Just let, 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 if we have the manpower, we're good. That's what I'm saying. Maybe we can get a feel for yeah. how many volunteers we'll have to do maybe at the next meeting. Because it has ripple effects. About, it helps out with our code enforcement, not issuing tickets. It allows someone to get rid of the tires they may have. Oh. Yeah, but they're going to start season. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my son. Yeah. 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 I just thought of that. Well, well that's three. Now. As I said, <laughs> we got three. Talk to Don Hall. He's got some guys lined up. Okay. Well, let's revisit at the next meeting, too. All right. I mean, if we can pull it off, that's something council be willing to do. Why don't you put yeah. something onto the website now asking for volunteers to help do it and see what kind of response you get? That's an idea. Well, it's something that the community always, I mean, it's always tons of people show up. Yeah, I just think council should do, um, maybe look out to yeah. try to get some volunteers yeah. and let me know what you get, and then we'll take it from there. On that subject, do you remember, I know it was before you were here, before, you know, when I was still, you know, mm -hmm. fairly young, when they first started doing that, the amount of trash was, oh, it was lot. amazing. I mean, the town got, do you remember, Gary, you probably remember. It's a lot. It was amazing. I mean, we still get a lot of business from it now, but it, it's mm -hmm. not like what it was. I mean, we really, I think, cleaned out a lot of backyards when we first started doing this. <laughs> It's really not going to take a lot. Like I said, I know Victoria will sit there what and take money. You know, we'll I'll help. Really we got a few here. staff members. I don't know if we got some of you to help. Another yeah. five, six, seven, yeah. maybe eight people. We can knock it out. 
even if you have to extend it an hour later and finish emptying stuff, I mean, it does does such a good deal. Yeah. Well, I say we just revisit it and see what kind of uh, info we come up with as sure. far as volunteers at the next meeting. Yeah, we need to do it before um, September 1, because that's when Ohio State football season starts and my Saturday availability disappears. Well, Ohio State probably would make better trash tossers than football We'll players. bring the portable TV for <laughs> All Maybe right. the football team will help us out. Varsity football team. I'm sure somebody will pitch a TV. You can sit there and watch it on Saturday. I got my phone, so it'll be on. If I, if I have to be somewhere, there also be it'll be on my phone. But I like my college football Saturday. Right. Say Where do we stand with the plaques that we were getting done? Citizen of the Year. Yeah. They are still not back to me yet. So I reached out to Dayton Stencil. I'm working with them on it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any other topics, Council? Citizens? Emily, that'd be a you question, I think. Um, the Tecumseh Strong? Or, yeah, I just don't know if during football season yeah. would be the right time to. Yeah, I mean, they kind of they, take a break busy seven days a in the fall. Football, so yeah. If it were any other time, I'm sure. And maybe, and maybe going forward, that something we might look at going forward for Opposed next year. Pride workers. Says pride workers, you know. I think there's a, a few groups at the high school level. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. During football, you're not. I mean, you know, they get yeah. one day a week off if they're better lucky. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. You might promote that for seniors for their community service hours. True. That's a good idea too. A lot of them usually wait till like right before graduation. And then they all show up, <laughs> all show up here. <laughs> is, that, is that what you did, Casey? All right. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll have, uh, I can have April check into that. So, all right, anything else? Uh, let me make notes on that. So, hold on, before you go any further, it was Comsa High School uh, service hours. What other group did you say? Comsa Strong. Oh, Randy, Ohio State plays their first game on Thursday. Thursday night is hot. So oh, we can do. Yeah, but other teams play on Saturday, Dan. It's not working. <laughs> football season. Football season. Hot. I can't pick you on football. There's, I mean, Noon to 2 a.m. is I'm, I'm in my chair. East Coast, middle of the country, finish it off with Pac Man. Pac Man. It's my favorite time of year. All right, with nothing else, Council? Move to adjourn. Oh. Oh. Hold that for one second. Go ahead, man. If you'd like, you're welcome to. Okay. <laughs> All right. What's it? Can I ask what it's referring to? Because I may have you go to the mic, actually, if it's something that's. Miss um, Burner, would you like her to go to the podium? I just want to make sure I can hear it on the video feed, so whatever. But the podium mic is here. Oh, yeah, the podium mic's here. Oh, mic's up here. Do we need to move it? Let's go sit right in front. Can you sit right there? Maybe we should move our podium up closer to the camera. Sit right there. <laughs> you want her name and address, too? Yes. Ms. Barber? Yes. My name is Glenn Sexton. I would like to make a suggestion to council of all boards and the city of New Carlisle. I know some of you are already aware of the Sunshine Law in the state of Ohio, but I feel like there are a few of you that are unaware and they will need to put that is here on her review and they're gone. But it's very important people serving on boards on council or uh, to other meetings that are reason we're governed by law. Because we can't just jump in and say we can do or we can't do something. Um, it's difficult for people to serve on the board and on council if they're uneducated with the sunshine laws. Possibly this is something that can be looked into. You could register as an individual and complete the circle certificates.
You can get the Sunshine Law book on the state's website. Is, that is correct. Why? Is it the Would Secretary the, of State? No, it's Ohio Attorney General. Attorney General, yeah. They also offer a free online training course for the Sunshine Laws. I took that class. You just, read, you just go on the yeah. link on there and you just click it and register and get it. But, you know, with my things going like they are, there's a lot of new people. And sometimes they don't realize what things that you people have to do to fulfill that obligation. Mm -hmm. And it's very difficult when you don't have enough people to take to it enough. And I think that's a problem. And then sometimes maybe people who are on boards and things like that, they don't understand what it takes. When you people you know, take time out of your day and do things. And I'm sure a lot of people go bought research at home and things like that. But they don't understand <laughs> how to do mm -hmm. Fair enough. Mike. Sir. Isn't this course available through a DVD disc? I don't know if they do DVD anymore there might be something that they've recorded on their website that you can watch a presentation you can download it. but I, I don't I don't I never remember seeing that I don't they don't have a DVD that they do have where you can register online online but oh, or you can attend their, their three hour class depending on where it's being hosted at different times of the my thought was if they had a DVD or something like that for the city to purchase this and pass it around at that point. Mm -hmm. um, Can I be honest with you? You're not going to get much of it from watching it. Um, this past year with COVID, they moved all online. Basically, it's the same video they've shown every five years I've taken the training. Same example, same everything. You're going to get your most bang for your buck in an in-person class. I took Miss Eggleston when she first got on, and this is why you get your more bang for your buck, because the course material is the same. They don't change it. A lot of it's the same examples. However, where you get your information from is someone in the audience saying, this happened, how do I handle it? Like, if you have a Facebook page and you're from a city council, you can't block anything. You can't have a filter on there. If someone puts the F-bomb on there, you cannot restrict what they say. So little things like that that you don't, they don't touch everything when you go through that pre-recorded seminar. Mm -hmm. Council passes a resolution every year. I go take it for you guys. You know, but, and honestly, I think that all elected officials should have to take that. I do not agree with the state requirement that says I can go on behalf of council. Because you guys, I don't say you guys, all elected officials in Ohio right. are responsible for knowing that. Well, if they don't go, they don't know the ins and outs. They don't know that you can only do stuff in regular session. They don't know that this, that's where all the stuff comes from that I teach you guys on. You know? Um, so some municipalities are now saying, hey, we're just going to go. Some are not. You know, hey, I, I had nothing to do with her coming and saying this today. And I, but it's, no, it's, it's an observant that, you know, and I had brought up to you guys couple of meetings once you guys go to the next one that comes around I give you guys some dates but there is you get a lot of knowledge just by being there it's three and a half four hours and you know you go talk and you talk to other people in your field and I'll be honest with you a lot of people there are elected officials mm -hmm. I mean a lot of them go just to go to get the information firsthand yeah. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. anything else Thank you, Ms. Sexton. What's that? I wanted to piggyback on that for just a second. Um, I think that would eliminate, I mean, I know when the first course started, we had a lot of issues with everyone being on the same page and understanding that we had, you know, we're operating as an extension council and we had to follow the sunshine laws. And, and as much as 
we don't necessarily want it to be such a technical thing. <laughs> we are you know, as an extension of council and we have to follow the rules. So mm -hmm. I think going into it, when people are appointed to committees, um, even if they're just encouraged to start out with getting the, the sunshine ball manual and thumbing through it and saying, hey, you know, this is this is something that you need to review. I don't, I don't know. I don't know about making it a requirement. I mean, it would be great, but again. That's what I was going to say. Is it something that we should, that, you know, we got that re charter review coming up. It can be put in there for. I mean, I, I feel it's no different than when you, you know, this is kind of bringing it down a few loads, but when you coach a, a team, you know, you have certain things you have to go, you have to go, you have to watch the concussion protocols, you have to watch their videos and their training and, and, and things. So it would be I mean, it's similar to that aspect of it. I mean, it's a, it's a small price to pay. And, and really, you know, I mean, I know Mr. Bridge, I brought it up before the city will reimburse, you know, the fees for it. I mean, so it's really not, it's just time. Yeah. I think it would wore off a lot of the issues, though, with having meetings that weren't announced publicly or, you know, um, understanding that two people on a committee can't discuss and decide on something without being voted on a open session. I, I think a lot of those kind of things, it, it, when you do it, you don't think you're necessarily breaking the rules. You're just like, oh, you know, me and Susie were talking and And you guys want to do it like once every four years. I mean, just do it once in your term. Mm -hmm. I mean, but you'll get a lot out of it. You would. Right. Anything else? Council has, say they're out at IGA and they all run and run each other at IGA, and you have four of them there. It's a seven-person meeting, mm -hmm. even if it's only three. You know, discussing of city business amongst the small forum is not. It's highly frowned upon in the state of Ohio, and that this here's an example. You have a seven-person board here. This is why council should probably do some sunshine ball training. You have a seven-person board here. Three of them meet at IGA. They're not on record, but yet they're discussing city business about how we're going to uh, uh, pad our votes so we outnumber the other four. That's why everything in the state it has to be done in open session because you have an opportunity to form bonds and you behind the scenes. So when you look at what the state law says, is general discussion has to be done in open session with a quorum of members present to avoid people from being able to do stuff like that. And it's equivalent to all boards. So we have a seven-person board here. Just imagine if it's a three-person board, like in the like Clark County Commissioners. It just takes two of them to get together, and then 
they, they got it set. So you're not supposed to meet, you're not supposed to discuss that kind of stuff unless it's an open session where everyone can see. A lot of times people also think you can text message or email. Those are called route routers. Those are also highly illegal in the state of Ohio. So um, we have instances here where we think it's okay, but according to state law, it's Yeah, I actually have an update on that. I'm talking to Jake. Um, and since they were not officially a board, there may not be a violation because they weren't officially in the capacity meeting because they were not officially appointed by council. So I may be taking that away for the sake. But now they are. But now they are. But now they are. But I'm saying that past meeting when they sit when they yeah. met, yeah, right. they weren't they were never appointed by you guys. So they they didn't meet as a board. Does that does that make sense? Oh, well, thank you. Yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah. Well, it's a big deal. I mean, if we wouldn't have self-reported that and they would have found out after the fact, then it's even worse. We need a motion to excuse Mr. Cohen. So moved. Second. second. Motion by Mr. Weissbinger, second by Mr. Graham. That's who I heard first. Councilman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Okowski? Yes. Councilman Graham? Yes. yes. Yeah. Mary Lowry? Yes. Councilman Grant? Yes. Now can we move to adjourn? <laughs> yes. Motion by so. Mr. Grimm. Second by Ms. Eggleston to adjourn. Okay. Councilman Okowski? Yes. Councilman Robo? Vice yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Councilman Yes. Motion to adjourn at 760.